Ladies and gentlemen, now this one is going to be a special one. Every year, people want to know if poppers are going to be the meta, if insides are going to be the meta, and for the last few years, insides have been the meta in Pro-Am, but poppers have been the meta for Park. So what I'm going to be bringing you guys is what I know is going to be the greatest inside center build for Pro-Am. I've seen a lot of center builds over the years in Pro-Am because I've been playing Pro-Am myself. I was even in the league last year, and this is literally what I think everybody is going to use. Like, I don't see why they wouldn't. Now, you could also use this build for Wreck as well. It doesn't just have to be for competitive gameplay. And also, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, oh, your post control is not 99. How do you call yourself an inside center? Da, 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 da. Listen, this build is optimized to be the meta inside center build, okay? If you want to change something for yourself, you can do that. It's okay. If you want your driving dunk higher, you want this or that higher, go ahead. Do it. But don't tell me about what's better for a build or what's not because this is how inside center builds have been in the competitive scene for years. But by all means, if you want to upgrade your mid-range to a 60 because you think you're chicken from that 60 mid-range, go ahead. Do it. I don't care. Uh, hey, more more power to you, man. Now, quick little disclaimer. I will tell you what other YouTubers will not. We don't fully know how cap breakers yet. We know that you get 15 of them and that you also get them during the rep rewards. However, we don't know how early you get them, how hard it is to get your cap breakers. So in this video, you will see my standing dunk is not low or is not high enough to get legend rise up. And my rebound chaser is not high enough to get legend rebound chaser. But I'm going to be saying that you need to put cap breakers on it to get the legend for each stat. Now, it might change. Maybe you get 10 cap breakers day one. Then I will tell you to put the, the, the stats a little bit lower so you can save it and then put those stats on other ones if that makes sense. I know I'm talking a lot. Let me let me just show you how the build real quick. Now listen, I do not actually have the game in front of me. This is footage from when I was in Boston a few days ago when I was at Community Day. So I won't be able to just scroll through and show you guys all the badges and you know, so you guys gotta listen to me, listen to what I say. I will explain everything that you see on the screen. Now first things first, you wanna start off position at center. That's pretty obvious. The height, you're gonna wanna go with seven foot. Now for the last few years, seven foot has been the perfect mix of height length and speed you want to still be a little bit fast and you need to be tall enough to get rebounds over taller people the weight you're going to want to go with 248 pounds that will allow you to get 91 strength which is hall of fame box out beast and gold brick wall which is a very good threshold that you need to get for a center because those are two main badges that you really 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 need and then the weight seven you're going to want to max it out at seven foot eight that's pretty much obvious you want to be tall you want to be able to jump high grab rebounds play crazy lanes and get crazy blocks now let's Let's start off with the finishing. The close shot, which I believe is pretty much standing layup, is going to be an 83. That goes up with your standing dunk, I believe. Now you could put it a little bit higher. You could put it a little bit lower. It's up to you. The driving dunk is only a 68. Like I said earlier in the intro, this build is not made for fun. This build is made for the meta, okay? And you're not going to really have a driving dunk opportunities when you're playing competitive. If you want to load up on this build on the wreck, maybe takes, you know, and you want to have fun, maybe maybe put contact dunks con or driving contact dunks on it. That's fine. Go ahead, do it. But for me, I know that that this is going to be the build that a lot of inside centers use in Pro-Am, so you're going to want to go with a 68 driving dunk. Now, the standing dunk I put at 98, and that is because at 99 standing dunk, you get Legend Rise Up, which for those who don't know, Rise Up is a badge that gives you more standing dunks, which allows you to animate more, and with that badge on Legend and the standing stick, or the, the standing contact dunks, no, I said it right, the standing stick dunks, they're 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 back again. I, I was playing around, they're back. They're still overpowered. So you're going to want the highest standing dunk possible, which kind of pains me to say this, because I'm a power forward, so I'm gonna be the one getting dunked on. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just letting y'all know. Now you'll see that I put it on 98. You actually need 99 to get the the legend rise up. Like I said earlier in the video, you're gonna want to put a cap breaker on it to allow you to get to that threshold and get 99 standing dunk for legend rise up badge. Now the shooting is pretty self-explanatory. You are an inside center. You're not shooting a mid-range shot. You're not shooting a three-point shot, but you will get fouled a decent bit. Um, I put my free throw to a 66 because anything after that upgrades your mid-range as well, and that costs a lot on your build. So 66 free throw, you're gonna have to live with it. Okay, you're gonna have to try to learn your free throw a little bit, but it's okay. I, I believe you. Now, for the playmaking, the pass accuracy, as a center, you need Hall of Fame break starter. There's no if ands, or buts about it. You are going to be getting so many defensive rebounds, and the best way to score as many points as possible in a 5v5 game is to run the break. Literally, what set teams apart in the 2K League was how good their shooting guards ran breaks, and how good the centers passed the ball. Every center, you need at least 93 pass, or, not, yeah, 93 pass accuracy, because that is what the threshold is for Hall of Fame break starter. You need to be able to throw breaks especially with this year the act the 5v5 court is literally bigger it's a it's a longer court and it's a wider court so you need to throw the ball farther distances so you need minimum 93 pass accuracy low-key you might end up needing legend pass or legend break starter i don't know yet though we'll see what well, that's something we'll have to figure out when the game comes out 
the ball handle and then speed with ball they both just went up with the pass accuracy i think so that you don't really have to worry about that you don't need to upgrade that now for the defense you're gonna want to go with a 72 interior defense and a 74 block that will allow you to get bronze paint patroller as a center most of the if you're playing competitive gameplay you're not actually going to even be guarding the pick and roll you're going to be in the corner and swinging out the corner dropping out the corner so you don't really need much block because you're not going to be in the paint much unless it's for a rebound or if your power forward decides to rotate you into the play but also if you're in rec like you're still seven foot with a seven eight wingspan and a 91 strength there's no way that you can't get a block or can't get a stop in the paint if you can't you suck i'm sorry that, that that's the truth now like i said though if you do want to take something else down you, you know you know you're going to be guarding ball or guarding the center the entire time in the rec with your irls or something and if you want to you can go ahead and up the block a little bit personally i wouldn't recommend it though i think with the the height and wingspan you don't really need to just literally just play good defense get in the paint wall up bro it's not that hard the perimeter defense and steel they're pretty much self-explanatory they don't really go that high but you know you're going to be guarding people in the corner if you're playing competitive pro-am that 65 perimeter, def or perimeter defense it didn't really cost a lot on the build so you still get bronze challenger so when you're guarding people in the corner it's going to be harder for them to shoot pockets on you and then the steel is a 70 it allows you to get bronze interceptor and i think bronze glove but you're not really going to be using the glove that much unless you're blitzing somebody but the bronze interceptor matters a lot because you're going to want to play sweet spot with the long arms that you have you're going to be able to get steals at crazy angles so you're going to want at least a bronze interceptor which i think was like it was somewhere in the 60s i want to say it was like 65 uh steel or something for bronze but i just maxed it out to a 70 just because it did not cost pretty much anything at all to my bills i was like you know what let me just throw it up there and then now for the rebound that you want to go with an 80 offensive rebound because all that matters is really the badge that you get um and with a 96 defensive rebound you are going to get a hall of fame rebound chaser however all you need to do is put three cap breakers on it and you will then get legend rebound chaser which is going to be so annoying especially for me as a power forward because when i'm boxing people out and they got legend rebound chaser and they're also three inches taller than me four inches taller than me like that's annoying bro i don't want to deal with that but it, you know i got to give you all the best center builds so you're going to want to put three cap breakers on your defensive rebound to get legend rebound chaser now depending on the way that you play there are some centers i know that like to flip it so you might want to go 96 offensive rebound and then 80 defensive rebound that is completely okay that is 100 percent up to you i know centers that literally got drafted off of their offensive rebound because they would just get so many every single game for the physicals it's pretty self-explanatory as well the speed and agility you're going to want to max out you need all the speed and agility you can get as a center you're already going to be super tall and super you know heavy so you're not really going to have much speed to you so you need as much as you can get but earlier that like i said in the video you are seven foot so you know you're going to be faster than the seven ones the seven twos the seven threes which is going to give you an edge over them especially even though you're still going to have badges that make up for your height like the 99 standing dunk with the legend rise up and the stick dunking and then the legend rebound chaser which is going to really help on rebound the strength i said earlier in the video that the threshold for strength so box out so the, the way they did it was box out beast hall of fame and gold brick wall are both at 91 strength and then gold box out beast and silver brick wall is at 83 strength so for my park builds i'm actually going to be putting 83 strength on them just because but for the uh for prime you're gonna want at least hall of fame box out beast and gold brick wall you need to be able to get your guards open especially the way lockdowns are looking this year if you guys want to see a lockdown build go to my channel make sure you check that out but yeah you're you're gonna want the strength you need to help your guards out as much as you can maybe you can even put your badge plus one on your brick wall to make it hall of fame brick wall that way you get hall of fame box out beast and hall of fame brick wall with only a 91 strength that's low-key not a bad idea i would definitely recommend doing that and then the vertical you're not really gonna have the craziest vertical but 76 vertical is very good because somebody at seven foot with a 76 vertical you're gonna be jumping very high especially when you're paired with badges like legend rebound chaser literally i go i actually can't wait for legend rebound chaser bro that badge just sounds crazy but yeah this is the build and then when it's all said and done let's see what the shades are you got shades of Shaq, rudy gobert and jalen duran i don't even know who that is that's a random the first two are goats though and then it should say i actually forget what it says i'm gonna be honest it says you have built an interior scoring playmaker that's low-key kind of tough i wish it said something about like defense like maybe two-way interior scoring playmaker but that just i don't know maybe that's too much i maybe i shouldn't you know maybe i shouldn't want that but yeah this is the build now like i said earlier if you want to change something go ahead ahead it's okay but do not come in my chat talking about oh you or sorry do not come in my comments talking about oh you need more post control or driving layup or you're a center no this is for competitive gameplay i've been playing competitive 2k for a few years now i know what centers look look for i know what comp center builds look like this is comp center builds if you want to put more layup or post control or whatever go ahead if that if that's the way you play go ahead but i'm showing you guys a competitive 
build. Enough ranting though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe. I have a whole bunch of NBA 2K25 footage already dropped on my channel and I'm going to be streaming and it's posted on TikTok. So make sure you check everything out, okay? There is so many builds and gameplay that you do not want to miss on. I have so much great content for y'all. So much footage to show you guys. I hope y'all have a great day. Stay safe and peace out.